Hey, Chris, what you doing? Oh, um, well, you know how China has the nine dash line to stake its claim in the South China Sea? Right. Well, I'm just counting how many dashes it needs for its new claim in the Arctic. And it looks like it needs to be a 52 dash line. Welcome back to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. What was that thing they said about winter in that totally obscure TV show that nobody's ever heard of? Winter is coming. Oh, yeah. Well, that's just make-believe. Because here in the real world, winter has been leaving, at least in the North Pole. The Arctic is melting so fast, the North Pole could be ice-free during the summer within the next decade or two. But that's old news. Seriously, that news report was from a decade ago. And guess what? Ten years later, a lot of the ice around the North Pole is actually gone. But what's a loss for polar bears is a win for the Chinese Communist Party. Because it means new access to natural resources and shipping lanes. Hooray! The U.S. Geological Survey also estimates the Arctic holds about 13% of the world's undiscovered oil reserves and 30% of the natural gas reserves. All in all, the Arctic holds about 22% of the world's undiscovered hydrocarbon resources. Wow, shipping lanes and natural resources? No wonder China has just declared itself a near-Arctic state. China is definitely near the Arctic, in the sense that the northernmost tip of China is a mere thousand miles south of the Arctic Circle. Which is like saying that New York is a near-Caribbean city, because it's only a thousand miles from the Bahamas. <laughs> Beach time! Of course, it's actually snowing outside. People who can read maps might notice that England and even Germany are further north than China. But China is definitely on the same planet as the Arctic, so I guess that's something. At least, it's enough for the Chinese Communist Party to have its own ambitious strategy for the Arctic. China is determined to better know the Arctic, protect the Arctic, utilize the Arctic, and participate in the governance of the Arctic. Yes, the CCP wants China to be one of the countries calling the shots in the Arctic, and wants to quote-unquote utilize the Arctic. And that means using its seafaring shipping lanes and getting its hands on Arctic resources. Like Santa's workshop, then all the toys will be made in China. That's the gist of a new white paper on China's Arctic strategy, recently published by China's State Council Information Office. Okay, except for the part about Santa. That's still top secret. Here's what the white paper says. It stresses that China should be firm in defining itself as an important stakeholder in the Arctic for its geographic adjacency to the area and its participation in regional and global affairs. A core component of this new plan is to become a shipping powerhouse as the warming waters open up faster and cheaper routes through the ice-free Arctic. A milestone was set in 2014 when a cargo vessel went through the Northwest Passage without the escort of an icebreaker. The most important Arctic shipping route is the Northwest Passage. It runs through Canada and links East Asia with the eastern U.S. during the summer when the ice is melted. It's about 40% shorter than going down through the Panama Canal. It's also much cheaper. Hmm, cheaper and faster than the Panama Canal? I sure hope Panama doesn't regret dumping Taiwan for the Chinese Communist Party. The second major Arctic route is called the Northeast Passage, or the Northern Sea Route. It runs along the coast of Russia. Just 10 years ago, no ships ran here because of the ice. But in 2016, 19 ships crossed through the Northeast Passage. For China, access to these shipping routes has become a part of Xi Jinping's One Belt, One Road initiative, which is made of trade corridors across land and along the sea. One Belt, One Road is the CCP's massive scheme to transport goods between China and the rest of the world, and, in the process, give China access to precious resources. Now in its new Arctic strategy, the Chinese regime is careful to point out that it has no territorial claims in the Arctic. In fact, China supports the peaceful settlement of disputes over territory and blah 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 efforts to safeguard security and stability in the region. 
Because when the Chinese regime talks about protecting peace and stability in a disputed region, you know what it's code for. Send in the soldiers of peace. Look, there's enough countries with claims to the Arctic already. Do they really need another country involved? Especially one with a history of building fake islands and putting real missiles on them? Even without China, competing territorial claims in the Arctic already make the North Pole an explosive powder keg on thin ice. Not long ago, Russia tried to show who's boss by running the biggest military drills in the history of the Arctic. Over 150,000 personnel, thousands of jets, tanks and ships. The training scenario was such that an armed conflict had erupted over the South Kuril Islands with Japan, and the Russian Arctic Army was tasked with defending the Arctic territories against the American Army. So if the CCP really does get involved in Arctic governance, it's going to have a lot to deal with. So, could the Arctic become the new South China Sea? Maybe we could just call it the North China Pole. If that happens, I know what I'll be doing. So what do you think? Will China join the race to control the Arctic, or will it chill out? And who wants me to ride a polar bear? Leave your comments below. Thanks for watching this episode of China Uncensored. Once again, I'm your host, Chris Chappell. See you next time. Wait! Before you go, I have something important to tell you. You know, not many companies are brave enough to advertise on China Uncensored. But there is one I want you to know about. They sell amazing food. Thrive Life. And unlike a lot of other meal delivery food, they've got GMO-free, gluten-free, and organic options. But unlike Blue Apron, Thrive Life meal packs won't go rotten in your fridge after a couple of days. Thrive food is freeze-dried, so it lasts several months, even years. I know what you're thinking. Freeze-dried food? Are you sure about this? I was skeptical too, until they sent me a box of samples. And I can honestly tell you, it's delicious. They sent me this whole box. There's a ton of amazing food in here. Everything from snacks to meals. Uh, my personal favorite is the South Pacific style stir fry with pulled pork. Now I know it comes in a box, but this is what it looks like cooked. And it only took me minutes to make. And they sell hundreds of other foods. Uncensoring China takes a lot of energy. And I don't always have time to plan meals. I can't tell you how many times food has gone bad in my fridge because I can cook it for a couple of days. Thrive Life basically solved this for me. It's super convenient, tastes great, and I don't have to worry about it going bad. It's also more affordable than Blue Apron. I provided a link below to order. Just try one or two meals. You're gonna love it. And China Uncensored gets a commission on any purchase you make. So this is a great way to help the show and get some tasty food out of it. Plus, if Kim Jong-un ever does launch a nuke, you'll have all the food you need in the post-apocalyptic future. So help the show out and buy yourself some treats. Thrive Life. Click the link below.